Some pirates were so prolific and so aggressive that they made a massive lasting impact on the maritime world. Throughout the waning years of the golden age of piracy, such an individual existed in the form of Edward Lowe, also referred to as Ned Lowe. In the early 18th century, Lowe took to the seas as a pirate and then proceeded to develop one of the most prolific careers of anybody to do so. Along the way, he garnered a fearsome reputation of one of the most brutal buccaneers of the Golden Age, and it is this behaviour and his practical career as a whole that we will be exploring in today's video. We're going to take a crash course through the life and times of this infamous pirate, exploring his early years, rise to fame, extensive career, and ultimate death. Sit back and relax as we explore the dramatic and terrifying career of Edward Lowe, the most brutal pirate ever to sail the Caribbean. Lowe's Early Years Much of what we know about Edward Lowe's early life comes from Captain Charles Johnson's A General History of the Pirates. This book is notoriously fictionalised and much of what we know about pirates from the Golden Age comes from this source, making it a difficult area of history for professionals to explore. In the book, Johnson states that Edward Lowe was born into a family of poor thieves in the city of Westminster in London, England in the year 1690. His family were reportedly known in the area for petty crime and Edward quickly fell into the same circles as he reached adolescence. While living with his family in England, Edward would pick the pockets of passers-by around the streets of London, gamble frequently, and steal from the local shops and businesses. He was often seen committing these crimes around the streets close to the House of Commons, where he would gamble with the footmen and waiters. Edward is described in a general history of the pirates as being quarrelsome by nature, a prolific cheat, and he reportedly often ran wild in the streets of Westminster with his associates. He seemed like the perfect candidate for a life of piracy. As he became a young adult, Edward Lowe would become a more prolific criminal, eventually transforming his petty pickpocketing into career burglary. He and a team of his associates, possibly other family members, would take to breaking into houses around the Westminster area, and he soon found himself a wanted man. Lowe could not stay in London forever if he was being pursued by the police, and eventually took his chances in the New World. Lowe found himself settling in Boston, Massachusetts, after spending three years travelling around the eastern coast of North America, starting in 1710. This would temporarily provide him with a respite from his life of crime, especially when he met and married Eliza Marble, holding the ceremony at the First Church of Boston in 1714. Edward would go on over the next five years to father two children, a boy who died when he was very young and a girl named Elizabeth. These happy days would not last, however, and upon giving birth to Elizabeth, Eliza died from complications caused by the labour. Lowe sunk into a deep depression upon losing his wife, and this would have a profound impact on his attitude to women throughout his practical career. But more on that later. The Rise of Edward Lowe Leaving behind his daughter amidst his depression, Edward Lowe turned to the sea. In 1722, he would find work as a rigger on board a merchant slough alongside a crew of 12 men who were collecting a shipment of logs in Honduras. Edward supervised the shipment and, for a time, collected an honest wage. Soon enough, however, Lowe would return to his old ways. One night, Lowe returned to the slough to eat. His captain denied him a meal, stating that Lowe would have to wait and finish his work first before he was given food. Lowe's reaction to this was to grab a nearby musket and fire off a shot aiming for the captain. He missed and struck a fellow sailor in the throat instead. It was at this time that Edward Lowe, along with several of his crewmates on board the merchant's ship, were fired from their jobs and turned to a life of piracy. They started by taking over a small slough around the coastal waters of Rhode Island and mercilessly killed a man in the process. Upon seizing the vessel, Edward Lowe proclaimed to his newfound crewmates that they would make a black flag and declare war against all the world. Upon seizing control of the slough, Lowe began marauding around the waters of the eastern United States. He captured merchants, raided ships, and built a name for himself as a violent and aggressive pirate. Accounts from those they captured claim that Lowe and his men took great pleasure in the suffering and even killing of captives on board the ship. Danger lurked in their very smiles, said sailor Philip Ashton upon his capture, after he was beaten and threatened by Lowe's men. Edward did not start his career as a captain, however. Heading south towards the British overseas territories of Grand Cayman, he found work as a lieutenant to George Lothar, an experienced pirate who had been marauding in the waters of the Caribbean for several years. Alongside him was Francis Farrington Spriggs, a pirate with a taste for blood comparable to Lowe's. The duo were loyal and terrifying pirates when coupled with the tenacity and experience of Lothar, and Lowe would readily teach others on board Lothar's ship torture techniques he had picked up while at sea in the years prior. 
It only took a few months before Lothar gifted Lowe with his own ship to captain, a six-gun brigantine sailing under the name of Rebecca in the May of 1722. Along with 44 men, Lowe took to the seas under his own jurisdiction, well equipped to become a notorious pirate. The most notorious pirate of the Golden Age. Lowe quickly proved himself to be a ruthless and intimidating pirate. Flying the iconic Jolly Roger flag, his first act as captain was to head north to Nova Scotia, where he successfully stole a fleet of 13 fishing vessels. Despite the fact that he was armed with just one ship, Lowe's intimidating demeanour and aggression quickly saw the crews and fishermen on board these vessels surrender, and Lowe claimed the entire fleet as his own. He abandoned the Rebecca as soon as he had claimed her and took the largest of his new acquisitions for himself, a 10-gun schooner weighing 80 tons which he named the Fancy. Many of the fishermen on board the stolen ships were forced into a life of piracy and soon found themselves loyal to Captain Edward Lowe. Aboard the Fancy, Lowe opted to fly false colours on his ship and ambushed unsuspecting vessels at the last moment. He took his crew over to the other side of the Atlantic off the coast of Portugal for a brief stint capturing French warships, one of which, the Rose Pink, he claimed as his flagship instead of the Fancy. It was across this time that Edward Lowe exercised some of his most excessive brutality, which most often involved the torture or mistreatment of captured sailors from ships he had targeted. On occasions, Lowe would string up his victims on the yardarm of the mast aboard his ships, raising and lowering them at great speeds until they eventually died. On the 25th of January, 1723, Lowe and his crew captured a Portuguese ship, the Nostra Signora de Victoria, and the captain quickly destroyed the treasure on board, casting it into the sea rather than handing it over to the pirates. Furious, Edward Lowe personally severed the captain's lips with his cutlass, cooked them, and forced the poor man to eat them. He then proceeded to murder the entire crew of the ship. He would burn men alive and kill huge numbers of people in individual raids personally. Lowe would employ such horrendous tactics specifically to garner a reputation and to instill fear into those who would oppose him. His own men would at times describe him as a maniac and a brute, and the historian Edward Leslie has referred to Lowe as a psychopath with a history filled with mutilations, disembowelment, decapitations, and slaughter. Within a few years, the captain had worked up one of the most terrifying reputations of any historical figure. As Lowe slashed and stabbed at his victims, however, a war waged within him. He became consumed by depression and guilt at leaving his young daughter behind in Boston, and remained saddened by the loss of his wife. He would refuse to employ married men at the fear of bringing death to a happy married couple, and would always deliver women and children to port unharmed. Lowe's Final Years Such violent actions cannot go unnoticed for long, however. Edward Lowe in the June of 1723 returned his fleet to the coast of North Carolina after a bounty was placed upon his head. The crew was eventually pursued by a huge British man of warship, the HMS Greyhound, whose meticulously trained men nearly succeeded in putting a stop to Lowe's career. Lowe managed to flee his ship with a skeleton crew and around £150,000 worth of gold on board his old ship, the Fancy, and attempted to return to the Azores. Many of the men left on board his ship were tried and hanged at execution dock on the banks of the River Thames in London, as Lowe remained at large. Aboard the Fancy, Lowe undertook drastic attempts to regain his foothold on the world of piracy. He succeeded in taking control of a whaling ship out on the open ocean, but mercilessly slaughtered the captain in a fit of rage following his recent defeat in the battle with the HMS Greyhound. The whaling vessel's former crew were set adrift in the Atlantic Ocean with no supplies, but eventually survived when they found their way back to Nantucket. Lowe's next act was to decapitate a captain of a fishing boat around the American coast, and he continued to become less and less stable. He ordered a total brutality towards the crew of the ships he captured, so brutal in fact that the pirates on board his ship refused to comply with him. He focused his brutality towards the English following his recent defeat. Eventually, more of Lowe's crew would abandon him, and he was left with one sole ship by the end of 1723, the Merry Christmas, a 34-gun ship still manned by a skeleton crew whose loyalty was waning in the face of his horrific actions. It is at this point where the lines blur and the truth about how Edward Lowe's life and career came to their ends is disputed. Very few further reports of Lowe's behaviour or life are recorded after 1724, and it's thought that from here, Lowe took one of a few actions. 
Charles Johnson's A General History of the Pirates claims that Lowe lost his last remaining ship in a storm off the coast of Brazil. The National Maritime Museum of Brazil's take on this is that Lowe evaded capture for the remainder of his life, which was most likely spent in Brazil if this theory was to be true. The Pirates' own book, a commonly cited yet not particularly reliable source, claims that Edward Lowe was removed from his ship at the hands of a mutiny by his crew, who could finally take no more of his treatment of his victims. It is claimed, however, that the final straw was when Lowe finally snapped and murdered a fellow pirate in his sleep, accusing him of insubordination. The book claims that Captain Shipton took his place, but Lowe was rescued by a French ship. As soon as the French learned of Lowe's true identity, however, they took him to Martinique, put him on trial, and hanged him later that year. The only exception to these theories is one that arose in March 1726, when a man meeting Lowe's description was spotted aboard a small canoe-like vessel by the HMS Diamond, close to the island of Roatan in the Caribbean. The English warship, without a canoe to chase him in, could not follow, but it was reported that the indigenous mosquito population of Roatan may have killed him when he arrived on the island. He may have also been spotted later in 1739, fleeing a Spanish fort close to Portobello in Panama. Supposedly, the man that was reported to be Edward Lowe was fighting for the Spanish, but was forced to flee the fort when the British attacked it as part of the War of Jenkins' Ear. It is unknown how much weight these reports hold, as historical sources from the time are scarce at best. So, who actually knows? Did Edward Lowe manage to evade justice and escape to a life of retirement in Brazil? Was he arrested and hung by the French? Or did he manage to seek protection amongst the Spanish and fight for them against his most hated of rivals, the British? Perhaps one day we will know for certain. The Legacy of Edward Lowe The harsh brutality of Edward Lowe has unsurprisingly had a reputable impact in popular media and culture since the times he was active. Following his disappearance, the British took action and deployed many more warships to the waters of the Caribbean, which contributed to the eventual fall of piracy and the time period that has become known as the Golden Age of Piracy. Lowe has since appeared in many books, including Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Green Flag, in which he describes the murderous pirate as a savage and desperate man. Writers across both sides of the Atlantic came to know him as one of the most merciless and skilled pirates, and his name has gone down in history as the most brutal of any of his contemporaries in the Golden Age. As well as his appearances in literature, Edward Lowe's face has been plastered over stamps, cigarette cards, and even theme park rides. The Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disneyland in California features him, as does the adventure television series Black Sails. His likeness and flag were used in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies also. To this day, treasure hunters flock to the islands off the coast of New Hampshire and Nova Scotia in the hopes of retrieving some of the treasure abandoned by Lowe in the closing years of his career. Outro So that was a rundown of the life and times of Edward Lowe, the most brutal and aggressive pirate ever to sail the seas of the Caribbean. While much of what we know about pirates and their lifestyle over the years has been fabricated by popular culture and the media, it would seem that Edward Lowe is almost what we would expect a picturesque Golden Age pirate to be like. A violent, dangerous criminal, as opposed to some of the more cordial, well-dressed individuals of the Golden Age. Some of his crimes and the way he treated victims on board his ships were truly savage and unsettling, and have rightfully earned him his place alongside the likes of Blackbeard and Calico Jack for pure notoriety purposes. Whilst his contemporaries may have not exercised the brutality Low did, surely his reputation is in league with some of the most infamous pirates ever to set sail. Thank you for watching this episode of Walk the Plank. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I'll see you next week for another one.